All right, thank you. I'll let you introduce yourselves. It's so like for those for that one i'm going to keep it a little bit different so i'm keeping all mine separate so i'm still sending miles hi everyone Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Jessica Mitchell McCullough. I'm the director of education at Nebraska Public Media. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Yes, thank you. Awesome. Um, well, I'm here today with my early childhood education specialist, Amy Castor, and my K-12 education specialist, Matt Huseman. And we are so excited to share some uh, resources with you and some information about the work that we're doing. So just to quickly tell you a little bit about what we do. Um, the education team at Nebraska Public Media, uh, which is of course the state's uh, PBS and NPR station, we do interact with all of the different media and programming, but really our task is to serve children, families, caregivers, and educators with family engagement and community outreach, um, along with running events and doing things like that in the community. We support the events that uh, libraries do and other community partners do. We produce classroom media and curricular resources, and we also have professional learning. And Amy and Matt are going to tell you all about that today. So thank you again for coming and for your time. Amy? Thank you, Jessica. Matt, I just wanted to check in. Are you having any luck with our slides today? Um, they seem to be working up until this point, so we'll see how it goes. Um, okay, yeah. I just I can't, this is my time to not be able to see them. So we're gonna, we're oh, going to okay. handle this perfectly just like we did last time. So <laughs> I am um, I am Amy Kastner. I am the Early Childhood Education Specialist at Nebraska Public Media, as Jessica mentioned. And I'm here to talk to you about the early childhood resources that we have available. Just to give you a general overview of um, <clears throat> kind of early childhood, what we mean for a PBS kids and public media is we mean ages two to eight is kind of that focus for early childhood. And we really wanna focus on those key, some of those key skills um, to help children be ready to learn. So that includes everyday literacy, creative and critical thinking, computational thinking, math and science. So those great STEM um, resources and also world of work. So these are actually priorities that have been um, kind of handed down from uh, the U.S. Department of Education as priorities uh, for the future. So in addition to PBS Kids, keep in mind that we also have those great Sesame Street resources and also our personalized Nebraska public media content that does support those preschool and school age children in those key areas of development, cognitive, social, emotional, and physical. We really want to um, nurture the whole child and think about the well-being of the child and also um, of kind of that intergenerational learning and kind of that family, supporting families as they learn to together. I am primarily gonna be talking about our family engagement electronic resource kits. You may have heard about them already. I know that some of you have been in some of the webinars we've had about them. And thank you for doing that, for attending those. So what these are, are these are bi-monthly family engagement electronic resource kits and activities that are for regular family events and also can be used during uh, your regular scheduled story time. So one, one of the great parts of these engagement kits is their flexibility. So we have it so that they're completely ready to go and they can, even with a complete script if you're not comfortable, and they can be either a 60 or a 90 minute activity um, as a standalone, but they could also work in your regular story times and also for passive programming. So I know that there are times when you want to have some programming going on, but maybe you can't schedule something. 
um, that would be a good opportunity to use these activities. Our goal is to support Nebraska children, families, and caregivers as they learn and grow together through that intergenerational learning. That is a huge priority of us, of ours, is to make sure that um, we're learning together as a family. And we're also actively seeking libraries and other community partners that are interested in partnering with us. And really, once again, our aim is to support all children as they are ready to learn. So what is included in these family um, engagement electronic resource kits? Quite a lot, actually. So the goal of them is to empower early childhood programs, libraries, and community partners to celebrate those intergenerational learning through those family engagement events or other activities that we discussed. So they all include an event facilitation guide with learning goals. So these are very specific goals to make sure that they have an educational component to them. And these are also based on materials that are research-based. We also have slides and a detailed script if you choose to use that, but also offers you that flexibility because you know your community best and you know their needs and their interests. We also have for all of them suggested book lists so that you can create um, not only a book to read during a story time as a part of the activity, but also you can create a display or do other things to kind of support family learning in a wider, wider area. We also have electronic resources such as some really fun, playful um, activities that have been um, pretty well received, which I'll talk about some of those specifically when I talk about the individual programming. We also have extended learning for home that includes digital games, podcasts, and just ideas that connect with everyday routine. Parents are already working with their children on, say, early math literacy or, <laughs> believe it or not, computational thinking. They're just not thinking of it that way. When you're matching socks, you're doing that, that is a STEM activity. So these are just ways that they're already connecting with what they're already doing, just helping to add some of that language to kind of expand that learning. We also have a new curated collection available every other month. So currently we are featuring World of Work, um, which is based on a dramatic, dramatic play. And it is featuring What Can You Become? And this is a family engagement electronic resource kit that invites children and families to really playfully imagine themselves in different jobs or career options that most importantly, align with children's current interests and strengths. So we've all been asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? And we've all given the typical answers. This is really what can you become? This is understanding that those different or supporting the fact that those individual interests can support a variety of careers and jobs throughout the lifetime. And these activities are very playful. They involve dramatic play and they support those growing interests. And that really is trying to make those connections to work options that exist now and that are emerging in the future. I think about um, way back when, when I was asked the question of what can you become and, or what do you wanna be when you grow up? And I never would have thought of something like say a social media director. That wasn't something that existed, right? So there are many careers that exist now that you just don't, aren't able to really prepare for when you're uh, 20, 30, 40 years before that. So just kind of working on those skill sets. The next one that we have available is Storytelling with Molly of Denali. And this one um, focuses on children ages three to eight. And this is primarily focused on oral story storytelling. And um, this one, really we want to celebrate family stories. The electronic resource kits um, like I said, is for three to eight is the primary, but it can be skewed a little bit younger and a little bit older um, with these activities. So because it is oral story storytelling, there are, in addition to like the telling of the stories, there's also like a puppet theater that was really popular where you make puppets of your family and you tell stories. Um, just really those kind of fun activities that kind of engage families as they're learning together. Um, and these electronic resources and activities are available in English and Spanish. And our first one that we did is Patterns in Play, which involves family math. PBS SoCal created a really great program for children ages two to five called Family Math. 
And we just used one part of that pattern to create a 60 minute workshop that does focus on children and families ages two to five. Parents, as I mentioned earlier, parents are already doing great things with uh, math literacy. So we're just trying to increase that comfort level and try to introduce ways that they're already can they expand what they're doing in everyday activities. This really um, brings the whole family together and doing uh, patterns in a variety of ways. In addition to patterning with, we think of those physical patterns, there's also patterns with sound activities and patterns with movement. So there's many multiple ways to do that. Upcoming family engagements are um, computational thinking with Work It Out Wombats, which will focus on cause and effect, which is another thing that children do every single day. They turn on a light switch, the lights come on. They turn it off, the lights go off. That is cause and effect. And then also getting creative with Alma's Way. That is really focused on arts and humanities, and we're really excited to introduce that. So what others are saying, um, we've gotten some quite a bit of positive feedback from the family engagement activities. And I really liked this one. This one's from a library. And they talked about how um, the puppet activity that I mentioned was really popular. And there was a lot of great conversations um, about stories that especially came out of that one. But especially, I especially love that one little girl actually came up to, to the library staff after the program and asked for more um, evening programs just like that one. I mean, nothing says enough that, that, that they loved it than a child coming up and saying, please, I want more of these. So how can you participate? To partner with us, um, plan an event using one of our resource kits. It can be one of the current ones, which, you know, which is World of Work, or one of the past ones I talked about, like the storytelling with Molly of Denali or the family math. Just email an electronic resource to request to me tell me the date and location of the event, the type of event. So if you don't necessarily wanna do a standalone, but you wanna include it as a part of story time or passive programming, just let me know that. Um, we just wanna capture that information and give me the contact information. We want to celebrate your great work. And part of what we want to do that is if you could provide photos or videos from the event, that would be phenomenal. And we do require a survey after the event, which is takes less than five minutes just to ask about who attended, what kind of feedback, and because we want to continually to improve our services and programming. Thank you, Matt. In addition to the family engagement, um, we also have PBS Kids has a variety of book lists on, uh, on numerous topics. They're updated on a regular basis. I thought when I was thinking about summer reading and um, adventure, I thought of children's books for summer fun, I thought about the great outdoors and there are a variety of topics that you can look for different book lists. Just as a different way to kind of look when you're theming things with other activities and events that you're already planning for summer reading. And PBS Kids Games are free educational games that are available in English and Spanish. They're available web-based through iOS or Android apps. And in addition to being educational, able to be um, once again, look um, selected based on topics of interest. What I really like for families that don't have access to data on their phone or Wi-Fi at home is that once they download the app and they download the individual game, it doesn't require internet access to play. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. Additionally, a great resource for parents, but also for library staff when you're coming up with different um, ideas for activities is PBS Kids for Parents. PBS Kids for Parents um, has a variety, so many resources, parenting articles, crafts and experiments, recipes, just different printable activities. And you can select those also based on age and on learning goals. So say you want something for art that would be easily available, or if, um, the families are really interested in a particular program, say Daniel Tiger, that's something where you could search for that and then also search for topic. And last but not least, we do have some wonderful self-paced professional learning. And even though these are, were set up for uh, preschool to grade two teachers, these are, would be phenomenal for anyone who works with children and families. 
They are free, they're flexible and self-paced. They're available in English and Spanish. And one of the, the things that I really like about them is that they have such a great variety of topics that would help um, with working with the public, such as dual language learners and supporting play with media and technology. Just kind of some gives you some new ideas or allows you to kind of support with all the great work that you're already doing in that area. Now it is time for, for Matt. Thank you, Amy. That was a good job. I appreciate your work so much. Um, yes, we're gonna share with you even more resources now for uh, grades K through 12. Um, and I'd also just like to say, I just really appreciate being in this room. I grew up with a mother that worked in the libraries and I spent a lot of summers at the reading program in Wymore um, at the public library. So I have a, an affinity for your work and, and what you provide. Um, so I'd like to share some more resources with you in the K-12 arena. Um, there are so many resources and we recognize that we're sharing, we're throwing a lot of, a lot of information at you. So we want to have this available in a PDF too, that you can access later or have these slides. And then of course it's being recorded as well. So, um, to look back and, and just be able to, to know that, where was that idea? Well, we got a connection that we can provide you with that additional support and resources. Um, so with that, we're going to talk about some of the resources that you see on the screen from PBF Learning Media, which is uh, really a content management system for all the content across not just Nebraska public media, but other public media stations across the nation, um, to more national programs like Nova Science Studio and Storymaker, which provide additional resources for kids and adults K through 12 that are interested in, in, in multimedia and communication. And then I want to talk about some of our local properties that we have here at Nebraska Public Media, which are Nebraska Studies, which is I think a lot of people are already familiar with and, and been used widely um, to some of our newer properties like um, What If and Innovator Insights to Nebraska Adventures, which really encompasses some of our virtual tour and experiences that we've created. Um, but I want to start with PBS Learning Media. Um, and so if you think about the learning media platform, I was not really familiar this existed before I started this job. And I think if you think about one stop shopping for content that is connected to curriculum and aligned to grade levels and by topic, I think PBS Learning Media is a spot that is a great starting point. It contains a majority of of the content and properties that we have that have been developed into uh, with additional educational resources. Um, it doesn't contain all of them, um, but it does contain a vast majority that we've built supplemental resources alongside uh, to help facilitate learning with the different media pro properties we have. And within PBF Learning Media, it allows you to save and organize resources. Um, you alliance the state standards, both state and national standards. Um, you can manage classes and assignments. Um, you can uh, import and export from using Google Classroom if you have an account already established there. Um, and you can create lessons and then your dashboards are customizable. And we'll show you just a little bit about how that the navigation works in learning media. Um, once you log into the main website, it provides a lot of topical resources. When I took this screenshot, for example, it was right before Martin Luther King Day. And so they the they will align resources um, that are um, time sensitive or highlight different events that are taking place. So that's always nice as a quick place to start. But if you scroll down the page a little bit, um, it has different news and events. You can connect to a blog or look at different collections or again, explore um, highlighted uh, collections that PBS and Nebraska Public Media have offered. And then at the bottom also, it, it features some of our local content. So as you sign up for a learning media account, um, it'll ask you what your station is. You'll select Nebraska and it will highlight some of those collections that are award-winning collections, of, like slight humble brag, um, that <laughs> um, are in and available to you to use um, with supplemental resources. So just something to be aware. Of. And then of course you can connect to our Smart Scoop weekly newsletter at the bottom, um, there's, uh, which provides resources on a weekly basis. Um, and the 
really helpful. There's three or four links that they send you out with different events and topics um, that are relevant. And so I would encourage you to sign up for that smart scope. It is um, very informative and, and it, that is all the spam you get just once a week. So it's not going to inundate you with a lot of material you don't want. So um, there's also then a link to our website and our Facebook page. And then of course there's a donate button at the bottom because we can't do it without viewers like you. So we appreciate that, that opportunity is there. Um, one of the things about this uh, website that you can do is you can search by subject area. Um, and if you click it up, it will bring you and you can choose if you wanna start with the subject by your search, you wanna go into civics and government, you can do that. Or if you wanna do, the high school level, you can do that as well in a variety of different subjects, both core and outside of core um, classroom subjects. Um, I would say that this doesn't even encompass all of the content that's in there, these subjects, because there are fine arts and, and physical education content in there as well. So this is, but it's a good place to start if you're searching by subject. You can also search by grade. Um, so if you click, it's broken down to the pre-K to K area, K through two. Three, five, six, eight, nine, twelve. Um, so, if you have an idea of where you want to look based on a grade level, um, this is a resource for you as well. Um, that student site button that you see right next to it, there is both a teacher version and a student version of this website. So, if you have kids that are logged in and they're students, uh, they will see a slightly different view. They won't see things like teachers' guides um, that maybe as a teacher you would see, or a teacher account, adult account, I should probably say, um, that you would be able to see that the students don't have access to some of the behind the scenes sorts of things. So that's, it varies a little bit in how you view it. You can also just search by topic. So if there's a, a specific topic or theme you have going on for a summer reading program, for example, you can search by that topic and it will pull back all the resources that are related to it. Um, and then from that search, you can filter uh, even down further, if you want to go by topic to grade level to even a, if you want to do a search by a standard number, you could do that as well. Um, and then lastly, uh, it gives you, um, if you click, if you sign up for an account and you click, well, it'll take you, um, It gives you an opportunity where you have your dashboard, which is kind of an overview of all of the lessons you've created or assignments you've built. Um, but within this, within the this platform itself, learning media, you're you can build lessons, uh, you can create assignments and push those out to classrooms. You can create classes. I think one of my favorite things is you can favorite videos so that you can find them right away. So you know that I have these favorites, or there's some specific ones I want to go back to or want to use right away. I can favorite them. I can organize them into folders too. So you, you can manage your content around topics or seasonal events or, or anything that you want to organize your folders in. Um, and then of course you have an opportunity to um, build out a profile a little bit with what your role and responsibilities are. And so, you know, typical profile as you sign up for any website. So I just wanted you to be aware and, there, and, and I'm happy to explain this further should you have questions about it. But it's, it's a powerful way to manage the content and also have access to um, some of the content that is available in PBS Learning Media. Um, so just to reiterate, this is, I think this is where I would start with the content um, and, and really see, you know, use that connection because it, one of the things that it's, it's there's, a, there's so much out there, right? And it helps you really sort of curate and filter down the content to specific information or resources that you wanna use. And that address is just Nebraska Public Media dot PBS media dot org. Um, one of the collections that we're gonna highlight, we're gonna highlight a couple of collections that we have already located in uh, learning media. And one of those is PBS, or I mean, is Innovator Insights. And Innovator Insights are short videos with innovators and creators from Nebraska. And they answer questions that are asked by students um, about different things like what was their influence? What's the importance of risk taking? What are they, how do they harness passion? What are, how do they learn from mistakes? So you have students asking those questions and the innovators providing their insights into 
what they feel worked for them and why. Um, <clears throat> and so we've sort of we've built this out into two different two different toolkits. A senior level, which really focuses more on the entrepreneurship and mentoring um, aspects of, of innovation and, and what that looks like. And the younger grades, which is really kind of a three through eight frame, uh, in, Innovator Insights Junior, which is really, uh, really focuses on the process of, of thinking about how do you innovate? How do you harness creativity? How do you dive into the design thinking um, in order to take an idea um, from just in your head to how you manifest that and create something from it. Um, and so we've really used the framework of design thinking, which really takes the kids through thinking about an idea, exploring their world, um, interviewing people to get feedback or to learn more about problems they may solve, um, to prototyping solutions and then sharing that idea out. Um, so that framework, I think, really works well if you think about it in terms of like a maker space could be kind of themed around the innovation idea where each student could go move from station to station to um, kind of go through that innovation process. And it's also designed that you could watch one of these short videos alone as a stand standalone. And there's key questions that align with each video uh, and vocabulary that supplemented it, or they fit into a larger unit that could be used all the way through like a, a reading program or a, a series of, of monthly events or weekly events. So it's, I think that there's some flexibility both on age level um, and as well as how you choose to use different resources. There are nine videos in this, in the particular series of the Innovator Insights um, um, featuring different innovators across the state, but the senior questions and the junior questions, uh, the senior ones are a little longer. They ask a couple more questions in most cases. Um, the junior ones are just a little quicker um, with maybe um, some not quite as in-depth questions, but very similar, really. Um, I would say that with this particular toolkit, uh, you could use, you could interchange them and pick out what works for your the specific kids that you're working with. Um, yeah, so again, there's just uh, each of the Innovator Insights has videos, viewing guides, a design challenge. Each of those design challenges, I'll talk about that in just a second, kind of progress a student along the way of, of the path of innovation. Um, there's lesson plans and resources. Again, there's a junior and senior version. Um, I think it would make a good framework for a makerspace um, or after school program. Um, it features vocabulary and discussion questions, and then it really empowers students um, to build out a network and explore mentorship in a deeper, meaningful way. Um, and we would love to find a partner that would help us work through this and try it out. And I would love to see what innovations come out from the other side. I think that's the most exciting part of this is I, it would be, really exciting to see what, what kids can come up with and then how far can that really go? So if that is something that is interesting to you, I, we would love to work with you on that. Um, and here's just an example of some of those resources and what they look like. The engagement activities that sort of walks you through an entire unit for the students. And that goes from how do you view the guiding questions as you're watching the video? And then it takes you through a bunch of different activities that could extend all the way um, to what, instead of interviewing someone in face-to-face, -face, maybe that becomes a podcast, right? So I'm gonna highlight some resources that could help facilitate that too. So we've tried to take it, it could be just a face-to-face -face interview with students interviewing each other. It could be as in-depth as um, we're gonna create a podcast and interview people on that. Um, and then with each of those, the supplemental resources have um, graphic organizers that help walk kids through prototyping, synthesizing ideas, um, how, templates for sharing it out to creating business cards even. So there's a, a, a vast number of resources and I, I hope that they provide, provide some flexibility um, to meet kind of the needs that you have in, in any particular setting. Um, I mentioned, um, 
some of the content that we have in our PBS learning media. And I just wanted to talk about this a little bit as you think about summer reading, but Nebraska Studies is a collection of resources that we have available. Um, this is one I think that a lot of people are familiar with already. Um, and it really, I think, empowers teachers, librarians, after school programs, anybody that is connecting with content to use this resource to meet the people and explore the events um, across Nebraska. And that could be photos, documents, personal letters, you know, there's special video segments. Uh, the maps and the timeline is all there. And, and a lot of that content is all organized along a timeline. So it, it walks you through some Nebraska history. Um, so I just wanted to talk about that collection briefly, but know that it's there and it's available. Um, and yeah, it contains a lot of information. One of the properties that we highlight and want to talk about is um, Nova Science Studio. Uh, and this is, Nova is not a Nebraska public media platform, but it is a PBS resource. And it is what you might expect that Nova would create. So Nova Science Studio is a program that aims to empower youth and, you know, especially um, students that are underrepresented in STEM to use and engage science communication stories um, and about issues that matter to them. So NOVA provides video production templates, resources, guidelines for student videos, opportunities for students to submit videos and share that could be shared out on, on social media channels from NOVA. Um, and if you search for NOVA in Innovator Insights, what you'll find is a collection, a unit. There's six units. Each of those units contain three different lessons. It starts without just beginning and onboarding that program. It kind of works into science journalism. How do you tell stories? How do you produce a science video? And then like at the end, you pull it all together and help students walk through that process. So again, I think this is a potential resource that could be used as a unit. It could be used, you could just specific things that you want to do um, or, you know, in its entirety as an entire unit. So. Just something to keep in mind. Um, I think that could also tie back to Innovator Insights. If you were producing some video content or you're telling that science story, you're communicating an idea, that's something that could tie back to the Innovator Insights as well. So that's Science Studio. This resource, is, I'm gonna I'll throw a curveball here a little bit because this story maker is not located in PBS Learning Media. It is its own standalone website. Um, but I, I think in line with creating video and, video and using multimedia, Storymaker is a really great resource, um, just storymaker.org. And there are projects, lesson plans, and storytelling resources, as well as tutorials for teachers and students. Um, it's, it was developed by PBS NewsHour and Student Reporting Labs to build the next generation of, of media creators. So there's content creation, media literacy topics that it touches on. There's lessons, projects, tutorials, and there's different toolkits. Um, and all of that is just in a resource library, housed in a resource library. So if you look at that screenshot of the website, you can see there's open prompts that uh, students can address um, and kind of tackle. Um, and that those are wide ranging topical issues. Um, or to lessons, and the lessons are for teachers that they can help facilitate this content um, to students, um, tutorials on how to, how everything from creating a podcast to capturing B-roll footage. So there's tutorials on, on how to use the, some of the technical skills in producing media, as well as projects and other toolkits that kind of combine all of those uh, resources together. So I think Storymaker is, is a great opportunity to help kids explore multimedia and as well as help them empower them to tell their story too. So um, one of the other resources that um, we are, we it will be in PBS Learning Media before too long um, and is our Nebraska Adventures collection. And um, Nebraska Adventures is really our virtual tours um, and if you haven't used the virtual tour, I think the state capital is the one that most people know about. Um, 
it really provides sort of that hands-on as much experience as you can from a computer to dive in and explore different resources. So we have the virtual tours that are for the state capitol, Buffalo Bills, Buffalo Bill Scouts Rest Ranch, As Asheville Falls, Asheville Fossil Beds State Historical Park, Morrill Hall, our state museum here in Lincoln, and then our newest one is the Larson Trapier Test and Power Museum, which um, Having experienced that and watching that one pulled together was, uh, I have a soft spot in that one uh, for that tour in particular in my heart because it's such a neat museum. It's so interesting and it has a, a fantastic story to tell. And I just think also the museum and the tour itself, the, the colors and the, it's and just the, the, the story behind why that museum exists and why we have a tractor test law in Nebraska is, is a super great story. And so it's one of those adventures that maybe is not as widely known about, but it is certainly a, a, it is a hidden gem on East Campus. So if you get that chance to see it in person, do so. But if you can't, there is the virtual tour that we provide. Each one of those virtual tours has interactive videos embedded within them, different educational inf information. Um, so there are, um, scavenger hunts where students can go and find different things in the museum as well. So there's a lot of opportunities to engage and maybe this also supplements a before uh, a physical or a, a, a real tour to one of these museums. It, be, it could become before or it could become after. So you want to, you went to the museum and you want to go back you, and revisit some of the, the key components of that particular place. So those are out there and available now on the Nebraska Public Media's website. And as I mentioned, they'll be in um, PBS Learning Media, Media in the future. And here is some of our contact information. So Jessica's, there's our email address, Jessica, Amy, and myself, um, as well as a link to our education website and a link to sign up for our e-newsletter. And the QR code, it links directly to our education site as well. Um, so again, I, I know we're throwing a lot of information at you. Um, so please feel free if there are things that you want to explore more deeply to contact us. Uh, any of us, we're happy to help and connect and see if we can provide any, any assistance in anything you're trying to do. We also, um, so I feel like we've communicated pretty well today, you know, some ready-made packaging for events for early childhood. And one of the things that we have, you know, is a lot of K-12 programming that oftentimes when it's made, we think about schools and classrooms or homeschool groups, but we would yeah. really, really love to partner with libraries to think about how can we, you know, think about and repackage some of that K-12 content to help pull in and keep kiddos that are in middle school and high school in libraries, because we know that that is a goal that many of you have. So if there are ways that we can engage with you in creating sort of media maker spaces or things like that by, by looking at the content that we have and playing to innovate to help to support some of that work that you're, you're doing, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we would love to, uh, you know, really support that work that you're doing. I'm just curious, Leah, as far as awareness, um, are there things that we talked about that you already knew about um, or were there just new ideas um, that maybe you hadn't heard of? Lots of new for me. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Is there it's almost... That Sorry, Matt, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Jess. I was just going to open it up to any questions or if there's any information that we didn't cover that you're curious about. I think it's almost... Um, it's almost overwhelming with all the content that we have. I think for me initially trying to organize it in my head where to start. And so um, 
again, like it'll be like the bat signal if you reach out. We'll jump into action and and our department and help you out. So um, any way that we can partner or support your work, um, we would love to do it. This has been a ton of stuff. So thank you so much. <laughs> I didn't realize all of these resources were here. Um, so I appreciate you telling us all about them. I think we're all just kind of taking it in. <laughs> yeah. I do. I mean, and, and process. And if you have questions that come up later or just things that you're curious about or, you know, anything, you can reach out to us at any time. I mean, that really, I think for for all of us, the thing that we love the most is when community partners reach out and they're like, what about this? And we're like, oh, <laughs> so many ideas. Let me help. Um, yeah. And we will be sending, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And we will be sending out a PDF of the slides to Tammy to share. So um, if you didn't write down all that contact information right away, <laughs> that will be coming. Yeah, great information. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all you. for inviting us to share and, and, and joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you.